Okay, so just a quick introduction. My name is Ian Cross. I'm the technical consulting lead for manufacturing and data management here at HUK Technologies. This webinar is about Autodesk Vault's collaboration and workflows. Now, just for the agenda for today's webinar, so I'll go through a little bit about what Vault is, uh, then we'll look into the different collaborations. So we've got shared views, shared data, Project Sync, Vault PLM, and the mobile app. So what is Vault? Okay, so if you guys haven't got Vault or this is the first time you're being introduced into Vault, Vault is a data management software that makes it easier to manage all of your data in a central location. It accelerates your design process and streamlines internal and external collaboration. Now, Vault integrates with more than 30 different orders design applications and provides powerful revisioning and access control capabilities and enables you to share your product data to improve your engineering cycle time and minimize your manufacturing errors. So using your PDM to manage your data. Okay, so Vault is, it's a product that's been around for a very, very long time. Okay, it's a mature product. It's not just for inventor anymore. Vault works with just about everything, okay? Now, I think the number of uh, products is just you know, 40 different CAD applications, um, just for what else, well, okay? Um, and then if you add in other things like SolidWorks and Creo and Adobe PDF, it works with Microsoft Office. So it has a it has an integration into Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook. So pretty much if, if you need to capture some information and you can any file type, you can then stick it in to the vault. So what does that mean? Okay, so it's a CAD integrated PDM. Vault runs in Canvas. So what does that mean? So that means, for instance, inside of Autodesk Vault, there is, um, it represents itself up there in the toolbar. So then there's pull downs to, to manage your X references in AutoCAD. And so if you're a designer and you're using the software to check in, check out and change the state, Vault is there. Okay, so it's not, and it's not just for Inventor these days. So we have Vault for AutoCAD. It's there in AutoCAD Mechanical, Electrical, MEP. Uh, um, it's there inside of Map, Architecture, Plant 3D. Okay, so it's there in the whole suite of AutoCAD verticals. And it's not just for AutoCAD. We then have it in 3DS Max. So if you're using Max as part of your collection and you're bringing up other file formats and you want to capture that design, you can check it in to Vault from Max. And of course, we have it inside of Inventor, Civil 3D. It works with Revit and Navisworks. So I would encourage you, if you haven't taken a look at Vault and what it can do for you, I would highly recommend you take a look at it, it as it integrates with all these different systems. The inner workings of Vault are to, it, the outputs from all these different systems are different. So the inner workings are different in Vault to understand that. So this is the product data management system for your engineering data. Okay, so what else does that give to us? So another way that Vault helps is with the duplicate search and reduction abilities. So we all know that there are inefficiencies. So if you've ever worked on design, and you're thinking, have we ever done this before? I thought we did something just like this. If you've ever had that nagging feeling, well, maybe you have. And through a variety of different means, have similar designs that you've already made and it's already been approved. Someone had already pulled a part number out and it's out in production. There's a tracking number. There's, there's a range of different things that you, know, you duplicate on your day-to-day -day life. And we find that if we could just reduce the number of duplicates inside the data management system, we could realize the savings between, could be anywhere between you know, four grand 
up to $23,000 per item. And that means that this item or that part that we went all the way through the design process, somebody took it, analyzed it, they used it, they mocked it up, they maybe pulled another part number, they sourced it, they machined it, all of that work. If the design you're starting is the same as something else that's already out there, it could be significant cost savings by using Vault. Now, with the duplicate search inside of Vault, you've actually got benefits that are twofold. You get to retro retroactive look at everything that's in Vault by its geometry to see, did we do this before? It will tell you if there is an identical part by geometry, it will let you know. There's this, and, and that is significant. It's also proactive. So for example, if you're working inside of Inventor, you can check your design in and run and find out if the part is a duplicate. Or maybe even just a different name. So Autodesk actually took the hard path of actually identifying the geometry inside of parts because you can always search for a title, description, name, and file, and all those other things. But we can actually search now on the geometry inside of Vault, not just um, the name or the description and things like that. That means you can retroactively get a dashboard of how many duplicates are inside a Vault. You get an idea, a ratio. And then you can go and reduce the time going forward and say, we've already made that. Tools like Vault working with Inventor have a replace command. So you can actually go in and replace the same geometry without losing any of those constraints. So again, there's a significant time saving in addition to all of that in foot. Sorry. Now, everything you put inside a vault is a recipe for your product. Your drawings, your designs, your CAD data, your PDFs, your Excels, your spreadsheets, all of that sort of stuff, it becomes your engineering bill of materials. And Vault manages that. Okay, everything is kept in a single source of truth, a centralized location. And not just that, we can go worldwide. Vault is scalable for any size team and enables multi site collaboration. You might have departments, divisions, locations that spread around all around the world in different geographies. People can work collaboratively, collaboratively as if they're in the same location, enabling 24-7 engineering and design work and productivity. Now, Vault utilizes the Microsoft SQL replication to do this. Okay, so let's have start having a look at some of these workflows. Okay, so let's start with the Vault cloud collaboration. Okay. Now, Vault helps you collaborate with external stakeholders beyond your firewall, so outside of your business. For example, it can be a challenge if you're going back and forth with your customer or supplier using emails, file transfers, FTP sites, Dropbox, OneDrive, whatever it might be. These are not CAD-aware tools, and information can be lost or miscommunicated. There's too much room for error and lost time due to file size issues, the number of documents, disconnected information in places. Now, instead, you can use a secure cloud-based app called Fusion Team with Vault to share these design files. External collaborators like customer suppliers and some subcontractors that you authorize can access your shared data and collaborate with you. Vault will take care Sorry, Vault will take care of keeping them up to date with working on the latest versions of your file. It's that simple. Okay. So one, get feedback and share a visual representation easily and quickly using that Autodesk viewer. Deliver your files to your customer and suppliers using Autodesk Drive. And collaborate on your designs automatically with using the collaboration tools with Fusion Team. Now, there is a few required bits of software um, to, to use these couple of things, and we'll go through that in just a sec. So what are the different applications that these collaboration methods use? Okay, so we've got Shared View, we've got Shared Data, and we've got Project Sync. Shared View uses something called Autodesk Viewer. Shared Data uses Autodesk Drive. 
and Project Sync uses Fusion Team and BIM 360 docs. For shared views, you need your Vault Work Group or Vault Pro. You need a web browser and obviously subscription to the product. For shared data, you just need Vault Work Group or Pro. And you need something called the Desktop Connector, which is a, it's a free download from your desk website. For Project Sync, you need Vault Pro. You need a job server and the desktop connector. So let's have a little bit, a bit more of a, an in-depth look at these methods. Let's start with shared views. So shared views is helping customers address a very specific challenge that they've been facing to get feedback during a review cycle from customers and suppliers. Now, shared views is a very simple and user-friendly solution allowing you to share a representation of your design with external collaborators and gather feedback without a need to share your intellectual property, nor having the customers deploy additional applications or viewers. You don't have to go get them to download something. For example, you can create a shared view for a customer and request approval or to provide easy access to the field, the field sales team for on-site presentations. Use a link generated by Vault so that anyone can view or comment on. An email is sent to the design engineer when anyone comments on the file, the share that shared view. They just then need to view and reply to the comments and manage the data directly from Vault. Now this was brought in in Vault 2018.1. So if you're from 2018.1 onwards, you should have access to these shared views. Now, the way that it works is you have your design engineer inside a vault. You right click on a file and you have the option for shared views or if you've got the shared views palette up, you can use it through that. The design engineer publishes and shares that design representation. It goes off into the cloud and then an email, you get a, a URL, an A360 URL, which you can share with whoever you want to give it to. That reviewer can then access the view through an iPad, through a mobile desktop, um, and they can access that view and supply comments. And then once they've had a look at it, they've reviewed it, they've put their comments in, that then sinks back down into Vault and notifies the design engineer. They can either reply and resolve those issues. So I've just got a little demo here of shared views and I'm just going to share with you. Now the first thing that users will recognize in the Vault user interface after installing 2018.1 is the new shared view command within the toolbar, the file menu and the context menu. Now the design engineer needs to get feedback on the assembly. He selects the file and clicks the shared view command. In the dialog he can name the shared view or keep the file name and then just click the share button to proceed. The design view of the selected file gets locally translated and uploaded into the format the OS online viewer can read. Once the upload is completed, once the upload is complete, the design engineer has the option to view the browser or copy the link to the clipboard. Now, let's take a look from the reviewer's perspective. What they need to be able to do is review the design. As a reviewer, they don't need an Autodesk based product to view the drawings nor the native data. Once they click on a web link provided by the design engineer, the Autodesk online view will be opened up in a web browser and display the visual representation of the view. The viewer facilitates design view enabling the reviewer to manage, view, measure, explode, zoom in, walk through, and orbit from any angle. Once the reviewer wants to use the once reviewer wants to use the commenting feature included as part of the shared views for conveying detailed feedback. They sign in with their Autodesk ID. In this case, the reviewer agrees on the design, adds a short comment, and then submits it back down into Vault. Within the Vault user interface, the design engineer quickly has access to the shared view and can see the comments provided by the reviewers. You can see this directly in product versus going to, to, to another document. The shared view can be accessed directly from the view menu. It can be detached, float around, pinned, unpinned, and reattached. Now, the designer viewer can then comment or approve it, and you can even extend the expiration date for another 30 days 
and then we can delete it if needed. So that's just a bit of a, an intro into the shared views. Now, how do you access the shared views? I mentioned before, you need to have a subscription for Vault Work Group or Vault Professional 2018.1 or higher. Access to the shared views is in the user contract management, but you do not need licenses. All right, let's have a look at the shared data. Now, basically Autodesk have extended the pack and go capabilities to make it easier to develop native data outside of the firewall by integrating Autodesk Drive and Fusion, which helps your engineering team deliver the actual CAD data to external collaborators. So the steps are as follows. First, the project manager creates a project inside a Fusion team or Autodesk Drive. Then the design engineer selects the file or the multiple files from the file list in the uses tab or the where use tab, or you can do a quick search, and then you select pack and go from inside a bot. The pack and go command collects the file, all of its reference files in a single package. Um, and then in the pack and go dialog box, the design engineer is able to select the method to upload it to Fusion 360. The external collaborator can now access the design data through Drive or through Fusion Team using the interface and suppliers can view models instantly and review designs in real time. So you can check the version of the file, the design references, the uses, the used in, the drawings tab, and download for downstream manufacturing workflows or archive purposes. If there were changes involved on the design, such as a new revision, the design engineer simply selects the same assembly, pack and goes, and updates it into Fusion Team. Now this, I believe, came into 2018.2. This came into involved 2018.2. So you've got your project set up, you then you, you select the files you want to upload, you then select the Fusion Team link, your collaborator or supplier or customer accesses it via the cloud, and then they can download it, modify it, do what they need to do with it, and then you can update it directly from Vault using the same upload method. Now, so the, the concept of that was, so you've got the mechanisms, you've got the pack and go capability for files and items. The benefits are it is CAD aware, so it includes all references, documentations and settings. You can select a project folder using the desktop connector and upload that up to the cloud drives. Now, all files are then copied from Fusion Cloud up into the drive using the desktop connector, and you can also do it for transmittal reports. You just simply link the Fusion, sorry, your transmittal folder to a transmittal folder again inside of Fusion Team or Autodesk Drive. So, as I mentioned, it came into 2018.2. You've got Autodesk. Autodesk Drive, you've got Fusion Team, and you've got BIM 360 Docs. It uses the desktop connector, so there is no need for a job processor. It just does it straight from your local machine. Okay, next method, we've got Project Sync. Now, Project Sync enables the Vault customers to connect their data from Vault straight to the cloud. Now, to just to be perfectly clear, it's not gonna upload all of your data to the cloud, only the data that you choose with full permissions or ultra secure control. Now, as I was saying, it's, it's, you get to choose what you want to upload. It's not just gonna grab your vault and stick it in the cloud. Now, you're gonna gain efficiency and increase accessibility by making all of the relevant design and construction data accessible on one single platform, creating a single source of truth for everyone and ensure the right team members access the right design data at the right time through a defined process. This eliminates the need to download files and upload them and reduces the opportunities for errors in transmission and the resulting work. Now, relevant design data is automatically synced between Vault and BIM 360 without any user interaction. For example, when a consultant updates a model in BIM 360, they get automatically updated to Vault and the engineering teams get that pretty much instantly. Administrators can control project-based data 
which can be shared one way or two ways. So it's bi-directional as well. Now, from inside of BIM 360, essentially you can define as much BIM 360 folder mapping as necessary for different collaborators or projects by mapping a vault folder to a cloud location folder, leveraging that desktop connector. Each collaborator has access to a specific folder and projects inside of BIM 360. The administrator can configure the synchronization to work in either direction. In addition to that, the admin can specify when the synchronization should occur at scheduled times. It could be midnight, it could be the afternoon, it could be the morning, or you can specify it on a particular set of hours, or so every eight hours, every 12 hours. Okay. Now, CAD awareness and link support. Now, Vault recognizes AutoCAD file references and automatically adds them to the sharing package with the external collaborators. Also, to make sure release data and the related file associated with that particular revision are preserved and the syncs turned on. Not only if the files in a folder are collected, but also all of the linked files. This supports customers to exchange project relevant information while the files are residing inside of that independent folder. This allows you to organize your data based on a product or item structure, then link to the main assembly or drawing within a folder mapping that is synced with Fusion Hub. Now you've got full restrictions and uh, permission capabilities on who can access it, when they can access it, what files they can access. Now that is simply done through the um, admin capability and the filter to specify a subset of project data that the collaborators need for their tasks. This is like the advanced search capabilities and the property list inside of Vault. Now from the property list, select a property you want to search on, select a condition statement and put that into the condition list. So what I'm saying is that you can you can specify that when the file can only go to vault when the property list is satisfied. A bit like when you move when you want to move from state to state inside of vault, you can say only move from state to state if, uh, let's say, if the cost is not empty or the approved by is not empty or approved by contains a certain um, set of characters. So you can say only upload to the cloud when it meets that uh, criteria. So there are three concepts, I guess, three workflows. You've got the manual upload, you've got the automatic upload, and you've got the transmittal concept. So scenario one, we have the manual concept of uploading into Vault, uh, uploading into the 360 or Fusion team. So design engineer working inside a vault, um, there is an upload and download cloud button on your vault client. So the user gets to share the data on an as needed basis. Okay, so there's no configuration in terms of uh, hourly schedules or um, per property criteria. You simply, inside the configuration, the admin configures cloud to vault configuration from folder to folder. And then the user clicks the upload or download button. And then that is processed through the job processor. So it's on an as need basis. Second one is the bi-directional triggered collaboration. So the, the vault admin or the configuration admin configures the Fusion folders or the BIM 360 folders. Um, like before, and then sets up the triggered based sync settings. So I want to trigger it every hour, every five hours. Um, I want to trigger it once a day. I want to trigger it based on properties. They configure all that up. There is no user interaction. The job processor controls the up and down, uh, upload and download. And it's just done in the background automatically without any user interaction. We then have the Shared, uh, sharing transmittal. It's pretty much the same as the previous one. You're just linking transmittal folders to transmittal folders and it's controlled by the job processor. Now, just to throw um, 
something into the mix. I've come up with a scenario for, and let's say external firms want to be involved with the design tasks for sub-assembly and due to time constraints, um, they want to leverage up-to-date templates and standard components and that sort of thing. So you can link um, your, des your embedded design data, you can then link up your uh, content set of files, you can link up your templates, and basically they can be shared on a file regular basis. So if you're updating your, um, let's say your templates or your design data or your, your content center, your, engine, your external consultants are always going to get access to that latest design. Now, with BIM 360 Docs, um, Docs is no longer in a preview state. It officially, we have official support for BIM 360 Docs as of 2019.2 in 2020. The only missing functionality from Docs is that it can't understand the file referencing inside of Inventors and AutoCAD. Okay. So you're just uploading a file, it doesn't know what's related to what. Um, the connectivity works the same, and it's just, it uses the desktop connector and the job processor to upload into cloud. So we have our project sync ignition. So you check your data in, um, it's set up on a project sync, you publish the 360 docs, and it's reviewed by the external party, You've then got your project sync review. The product gets reviewed, they review the issue, they modify the data in the cloud, they upload it back in, they make some comments. It's then checked back into Vault, it's down, downloaded back into Vault for the final approval. Um, you compare the versions, you review the data, you approve it, and the issue is then closed out of Vault. So best practices with um, the sync with the cloud. So I would say make sure you start at the root of Vault. It keeps the structure when you're downloading it. It's optional to synchronize your content set data, templates, and libraries, but it does give your external parties access to all of the up-to-date data. Um, it's up to you when you want to, what method you want to use, whether it's the um, the manual upload or the synchronization settings, that's, that's up to you. That's up to you when you want them, them synced. Good to know. Um, do I need the install on every user? If you're doing a manual upload, yes. You need that. If you're going to be manually uploading into the cloud, yes, you need the desktop connector on your machine. If you're using the scheduled sync, no, only on the job processor. So the, con the machine that is doing the configuration, so the Vault admin, they need it on their machine, yes. Um, the inventor files in the cloud do not have the bomb blob information. You can apply that out of the box job extract item data to create the bomb blob information. Now, can the project sync be used for custom jobs? No, it's not going to work properly. You, 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 sorry, you need to use the correct filters to identify all of the released files. So just covering those back on a brief um, slide. So we have our shared view, which is using Autodesk Viewer. That is sharing your um, visualization file with an external co contractor or supplier. They get to view it in the free Autodesk Viewer. They don't need anything installed on their PC. It's just a web browser using the Autodesk Forge platform. Um, they can use comments, they can put it, they can review, they can spin it around, they can take a look, it, it then sinks back down into your vault. You have your shared data, which uses Autodesk Drive and Fusion Team, where you can you know, select your files, do a pack and go, and you can upload it into the cloud using the desktop connector. You've then finally got your project sync, which uses Fusion Team and BIM360 Docs. Um, which allows you to upload and download to Fusion and BIM based on property settings, lifecycle states, or a manual upload and download. Comparison, um, BIM 360 is generally for the AEC teams. Fusion is generally for design and manufacturing teams. Fusion is included with your PDMC subscription or your product design and manufacturing collection. BIM 360 is a separate cost. 
but you get unlimited storage within 360, you only get 500 gigs with Fusion. They both come with um, administration, user access and permissions. They both have got markup tools. Um, but with the desktop connector, Fusion fully supports Inventor and AutoCAD references, and you can upload and download Revit. With BIM, you've got no management of Inventor references. You've got it, it does recognize XREFs in AutoCAD, um, and it's mainly used for the management of Revit files. So, Vault PLM. So, now, PLM or Project Lifecycle Management or Process Lifecycle Management, however you want to address it. Um, now, Vault is already managing your data. So where do these new ideas come from? If you, if you want new ideas, how do you manage your change, your quality? How are you managing your suppliers? This is where PLM comes in, okay? It's not just managing your engineering data, it's ma managing change in quality and suppliers and costings and that sort of stuff. Now, you may not already realize it, but you're already doing PLM in one way or another. You have processes, but they could be easier. They could be faster. They could be more formalized. Okay, so how do you get this information from engineering to the rest of your business that needs it? Is there a better way? Yeah, that's where PLM comes in. That's where Vault PLM comes in. Okay, so why is process management important? The reason you implement a PLM system for process management is to make sure that everything is documented and accessible from a central system. It gives you collaboration across the board through divisions and different business systems. You probably all, all of you are probably already doing these steps, but there are bottlenecks that happen from manual processes, time's been wasted, extra costs are incurred, quality is jeopardized. Now, there is an easier way to do that, and it will free up the work that you need to do and adds more value. So you aren't waiting around for someone else to do something. And you can have an audit trail, so you know when things are done, why a change was made, which supplier provided that part that failed, or which supplier provides a part that is reused across multiple products because it's the best part for the job. You know how much that part costs and so on and so forth. Now, having this in a formalized PLM system lets people know why a change was requested why, what was, what change request was uh, initiated, for example, due to a, could be a problem report, which caused a change order and a supply related to a quality issue and a quality supply, okay? Which means that for Autodesk customers is that you go from using Vault PDM to manage your data to using Vault PLM, which adds your process management to your environment so you can do more with your data. Collaboration for all is involved in the product lifecycle from engineering and supply chain to quality and manufacturing, everyone working from a single source of information. Vault PLM reduces the bottlenecks by automating task notifications to stakeholders. You can have a rich history of all of your change orders documented in a system for traceability and supplier management. You can have real-time status reporting without the need to manually manage Excel tables and charts. Teams can find information they need at their fingertips rather than spending non-value time emailing someone to hunt it down. So let's break it down what PLM does for you as an organization. We've already covered that we can manage product data and that's one central location and that's Vault. Vault has all of your designs, has all of your engineering bill of materials. And then speeding up that product development and business process, the approvals, the steps that products go through, through design, through the manufacturing, we can put in a time-saving process tailored to your company workflows. And then we can extend your value downstream to other departments and integrations with other enterprise business systems. Rather than teams operating separately and asking for the same information through email spreadsheets that are only accessible by one department, the walls come down and the value of your product data can be accessed beyond PDM beyond engineering. Now, Autodesk Vault PLM gives you what you see at the top there, the pillars of core PLM. But there's more. Keep in mind that you could extend this. But for what we would say is out of the box, 
what it does right away that you can realize an almost instant return on investment on, on these core functionalities. Rather than teams operating separately and asking for that information, we can break down those walls. Now, the NPI or the new product information is a pretty big one. The second is enterprise bill of materials. Supplier collaboration is a natural fit to this because of our architecture. And of course, change management because change happens. Uh, and quality management, which is tied to change management. PLM gets information out to other departments and roles involved in the product life cycle, from process management through to integration with other business systems. Now, you've probably heard the, the terminology NPI or NPD or new product information or new product development. You, some people call it state gate management or product design. Any process where you take something from concept, from an idea, through prototyping all the way through to service and retirement, that's NPI, that's new product information or new product development or new product introduction, whatever you want to call it. So it's all about the milestones and tracking the workflow. We also add in ownership of that pot. So you can see who owns it, who did something, why did it slip through the cracks, is something overdue, and it's real time. So it gives you a bit of project management coupled with design management. You can look at a product, a group of products, week over week, quarter over quarter, year over year. So we can actually group all of these together and see a complete portfolio of all of our products. So, and doing so by this, we have lists, we have a customizable workflow, we have approvals and sign off to make sure everything is on time. You can set your own milestones and make sure that these milestones are met. Now, your enterprising bill of materials. Now, this one starts off inside a vault and is in CAD and design, your engineering bill of materials, we like to say, you know, it's it's a recipe, okay? It's everything that's inside a vault is a recipe for your product. Now, with PLM, you can extend your bomb from PDM to PLM so it becomes your manufacturing bomb with numbers, parts, descriptions, and quantities. It helps you track those costs and revisions. Nothing goes out the door at revision A, so your enterprise bomb has to show that and show the history and show the decision tree along the way. So we take it from PDM to PLM where bomb can go after this, we would make the MRP or ERP systems. So we do a good job of tracking this all the way through the enterprise systems. You've got your supplier collaboration. We're doing, what we're doing here is we have the ability to bring in a supplier. So if there's a long lead or things need to occur before a parallel process, we can bring suppliers in and through a granular level of security, have them interact with you. Whether they're bidding or they're supplying cost and availability, supplier management within a system like PLM allows you to manage everything. Now, by the nature of PLM, supplier management allows us to have everything inside of one place and not have them go to an entirely different environment to collaborate product. We have our change management, okay? Change management can come in in a couple of different forms. The biggest one would be ECO, engineering change order, or an enterprise change order, or emergency change order, whatever you want to call it. Now, there are a number of ways that we can define an acronym, but the fact is change happens, and we need to get our arms around it. So change, sorry, so change and having an audit trail of knowing exactly what changed, when changed, why it changed, this helps to avoid the bottleneck. And so we can also provide that huge audit trail that some companies need for their compliance. So if something needs to undergo a change, sometimes a change doesn't need to happen, but we can supply apps and workflows for a change request and change notification. Now this is good because new to companies work exactly the same so it's tunable, okay? It's customizable to your environment and your products. We've then got our quality management. This is the last pillar we talked about. Quality management is coupled directly to change. Quality management systems and other acronyms like RMA and SCAPA, non-conformance, NCRs come to mind. All that quality means is that you're putting a process in place to make sure that there are regular checks and balances for your design. 
Quality can start with a regular internal audit, or it can be returned merchandise authorization. That's where RMA is. That leads to corrective and preventative action. This coupled with change management, makes sure that everything is in a closed loop. We call it closed loop design because an issue arises in quality, it can lead all the way back to engineering and through the change management paradigm. This means we have an audit trail. It means that your brand is ultimately stronger because you can not only identify the issues, but you can bring them to closure. And then over time, your processes get better when you use the quality management. Okay, now that's quite a bit of a journey. We've talked about a lot of these different paradigms with product data, process management, and enterprise integrations. But essentially, Vault PLM can package all that up together. And just in review, Vault PLM is online. Vault PLM runs that completely in the cloud and is accessible anytime, anywhere. The user interface being that it's able to run the browser with PLM, it means it's easy to go and adopt and it's easy to roll out to your teams. You also have an app store, which we have an online app store within PLM that allows you to go and download and integrate additional functionality, additional tools and templates that help you get your job done. And the final thing to talk about is the new Vault mobile app. So, the Vault mobile app gives you the flexibility and access to work with your Vault designs and engineering data on your mobile device, whether it's your Apple or Android or whatever it may be. Now, you can use the Vault mobile app to search Vault, view and review designs, check out and check in non-CAD data. You can view the bill of material items. You can change the lifecycle states and create and participate in change orders. You can take your design with you on the shop floor, on site, and go or go out to meet your customer. The Vault mobile app makes it easier to stay up to date on your project and collaborate with your team when you are away from your computer. So we can access our engineering data on our mobile device. That's great. We can access and view and review CAD data and non-CAD data, bill of materials and change orders. You can perform QR barcode scans and simple extended data searches. We can create and edit our safe searches and move files and folders. We've got check-in and check-out capability of non-CAD files such as PDFs. We can review and approve documents, move things through states and participate in change orders. We can add documents to change orders from the device such as photographs. If, you take, if you're out on site, you can take a picture with your mobile phone and then check it in to your change order. And then we have or share data with the entire organization. They can view 2D and 3D files. They can send the file links directly via email and they can access the insights into the recent activity. Okay, so that pretty much covers up the Vault workflows and collaborations with the cloud. Um, if you do have any information or you want to ask any questions, please do get in touch with us. Um, there is a chat at the top of the uh, window that you can ask a, a Q&A or put in a, a chat for me to answer any questions. If not, we're, I'm happy to close off. And you can always contact HUK via the HUK website and ask a question if something comes to you at a later date. This webinar was recorded, so it will be uploaded to our, our YouTube site and you get a link to that. Okay, there's nothing coming through on the Q&A or the chat. Okay, guys, well, thank you for coming along. Um, it was a pleasure demonstrating this to you. Uh, let's see, if you do have any further questions, please do get in touch. Are there any ties into AEC products outside of Revit? Um, we go back to list. What have we got? Uh, well, there's, there's the Navisworks, there's the Civil, and you've got your AutoCAD architecture, MEP. Um, 
which of the products were you thinking about, Jason? And Alex, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same as Fusion Lifecycle. Uh, non ODS products. Um, the only ones I know of are in manufacturing, but I can check that out for you. I just don't know, there's obviously the SolidWorks, there's Creo. Um, sorry, I'll just minimize that. Yeah, there's SolidWorks, there's Creo, there's Katia, there's MicroStation, so there's Bentley. Um, one, two, two. Uh, no, I don't believe there's a one two D link. Don't believe so. Okay. Um, if that's all of the questions, then thank you guys for coming along. Um, please do get in touch if you have any further questions. Thanks very much. Bye.